Kia ora Giants fans and welcome to episode 3 of GI Antics, the official podcast of the NBS Nelson Giants. Hugh Baden here alongside Phil Jones. Hello Phil. Hello Hugh. Just us today? Yeah, uh, we have to make some things up I guess. <laughs> Just a couple of lads shooting the Giants breeze. Hoops chat in its purest form. Although we'll probably let the listeners be the judge of that. Um, yeah, no guests, so just us. We're going to go through um, the games. The game last week against um, the Saints, the villainous Saints. We'll have a look ahead to the Tuatata game coming up for the Giants this week. Um, some community stuff. We'll look around the sales NBL as well. We'll have a whole heap of fun, give away some pizza. Uh, and a couple of quizzes, Phil, for you, your favourite. You love a quiz. I do not love a quiz. Uh, I tend to try not to go to quizzes where I, where I can. <laughs> where Your I can. wife is a very good quizzer. She is extremely good. She might be one of the great quizzes of her generation. Um, thanks for the support early uh, for GI Antics. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Up nearly four figures downloads now, which is awesome. Heaps of buzz at the game. People talking to us about it, Phil, which is awesome. Um, some good, some bad, which is great. Oh, we welcome all feedback. I ignore the criticism, but we welcome it. Um, and uh, make sure... Drop a five-star review if you can, where you listen to uh, your pods. That'd be great. And share the clips on socials. Spread it around the Giants far note. We want it as far as wide as possible. Right, we'll start with Name That Giant, Phil. Okay, first quiz. You copped go. a bit of trash talk via me from the wonderful Yelena Vucinic the last week. She claims, and I believe her, that she got Josh Pace within two teams. And you needed his entire career and then the fact that he was a champion at both NBL and NCAA level before you got him. But I got him. You got him? No, I got him. I got, I, I was, I got there in the end. You uh, got there in the end. Yeah. You only got it super quick. Let's see how she goes this time. Um, and see how you go. All right, you ready? Name that giant. I'm going career start to finish. All right? I'm not going to give you the years just yet. They'll keep them in reserve as a clue because I, I ruined it last week with a too easy clue. Okay. Harbour Heat. Hawks Bay Hawks. Judd Plevel. Litcher. Basket Baron, Perth Wildcats, Nelson Giants, Hawks Bay Hawks, Cairns Taipans, Otago Nuggets, Hawks Bay Hawks. Oh, my wasn't God. Judd Flavel early shout? I don't mind an early <laughs> shout, but it wasn't Juddy. Um, can we move on to the next segment? I'll come back. No, no. want to hear him go again? You. Yeah, go again. Harbour Heat, Hawks Bay Hawks. Licha Basket Baron, Perth Wildcats, Nelson Giants, Hawks Bay Hawks, Cairns Taipans, Otago Nuggets, Hawks Bay Hawks. This is a key. This is a Kiwi. Jared Kenny. Jared Kenny. Oh, nice. Oh. Ooh, that was hard. Yeah, nice. Um, champion with the Otago Nuggets in 2020. JK, remember that? Um, oh, the shortened version. The showdown. Yeah, yep. showdown. Uh, he had an epic mullet that year, didn't he? Yeah, he has. Do you remember? Yeah. And they shaved it off in, in the Octagon in Dunedin. Mm -hmm. That was, and yeah, that was it. Him and Natai. Yeah, that was a nice team they had there. Um, and he was a two-time Australian NBL champion with the Perth Wildcats in 16 and 17. Development player? Not uh, played, but yeah. would have been too old, I think. But definitely... Yeah, I think he was contracted. Yeah, yeah. Years. Yeah. Um, and just one of the all-round all good guys in the NBL, isn't he? Yeah, 100%. Good guy. He, I see he played a game beginning He's, of this year. Like we um, talk about Fitch. Play a GM. Fitcher. Yeah, <laughs> Mike Fitch is GM and head coach, which is enough. But yeah, uh, Jerry Kenny's general manager of the Hawks by Hawks and played. Yeah. I think while they're waiting for a bit of cavalry, we know that feeling, yeah, yeah. which we can talk about <laughs> coming up. Uh, yeah, Jerry Kenny, one of the uh, great people around the league, was a Nelson Giant in 2016. Did you play with him? 2016? Yep. He was, uh, I was playing when he came down here. Great yeah, suff suffered for, from a few injuries, actually. I think uh, he had um, well, he had an issue with his, like his bowel, he had, like a twisted bowel or something at some point. So he was really well, like struggling. A, like a dog gets. Yeah, like struggling through that. Um, and then he had, uh, during one of the games, he had Mike Carina, who's about... 120 plus kilos. Yeah. Jared didn't up fake and Mike went flying through the air and landed on top of him. Who was Mike uh, playing for? He's another former Nelson yeah, Giant. Well, you've playing. ruined my name, the Giant, next week. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. <laughs> he was playing for the Rams, I'm pretty sure, yeah. at that stage. And uh, I think Jared ended up breaking a couple of ribs oh. and played majority of the season with uh, an issue with the stomach and sore ribs. I think Fitch, Mike Fitch had tried to get him here in... 2019 or 2021 as a player assistant coach kind of vibe but um chose hawks bay loves it in the bay yeah. settle down there good on him good man right let's get into it shall we go giants go this is the segment where we talk about 
the Giants. Uh, and we're going to start positively with the Sky Broadband Rapid League because the young fellas, the Rapids as they're known, uh, are undefeated. Phil, yeah, another win. This one a little squeakier against the Saints. Overtime, that's the second overtime game we've seen in the uh, NBL so far for the Rapid League. But they got there in overtime, 43-41, 15 points from Hayden Jones. Five for five from the field. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we see those rapidly guys starting to gain more confidence and they all seem to be playing well. And I think it's a really good level for these guys to be initiated into the sales NBL. Um, you know, Hayden moved from starting the previous two games back into uh, into the Rapid League this time. And you could see there was a little bit more confidence and he was a lot more comfortable on the court. And also playing with a group of guys that he probably is more familiar with, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I guess in a lot of the practice situations, he'd be playing with those guys and also, you know, knows James Matthews very well, plays against him, plays with him. Mm -hmm. So a um, bit of familiarity in that aspect of it. Um, yeah, he came out, he played well, uh, as all of them did. I thought, uh, you know, Nick Davidson continued his fine form and uh, Ernie Kerr was, uh, was very Kerr. good. <clears throat> Ernie Kearney was great. Well, we get on to Ernie Kearney. So, yeah, Hayden was five for five, five for six from the line, missed his first free throw, and then you started bristling next to me, <laughs> as those who listened to the podcast last week, um, but then made his next five. Um, played well, played really well, and like I said, brought that extra bit of confidence. Not just who you're playing with, but who you're playing against. We talked about it on commentary. A lot of those guys have seen each other a lot at rep level or school level. So... Um, that makes a difference, right? No, no matter what level you're playing, if you've played against someone before, you have a little bit more comfort? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you just kind of know what you're up against uh, versus when you first step onto the floor against, uh, you know, Kyra Isaac or, mm. you know, somebody that is, uh, you know, a little bit bigger, a little bit more physical. Um, and more established at that next level. Yeah, and yeah. it has, has, yeah, some experience uh, versus the new kid on the block who, um, you know, generally is a bit of a target for most teams mm -hmm. because they don't want them to get their confidence up because uh, they do, they can be a bit of a handful. So, uh, you yeah, know, nice to see him go back and, and do well in that rapid league level. Now it's an opportunity to move forward and see what he can do in the next next level up. Uh, Caleb Chamberlain had six points. Ernie Kerr had six points and six rebounds uh, in the game. Uh, I thought he was great. I thought he was really good. Like He had got into a bit of trouble with illegal screens uh, in the previous Rapid league game and the previous NBL game against the Bulls, but he didn't get called for any one maybe this time. Um, but I thought he played really well. Uh, yeah. Rebounding, screening, everything. Scoring is two for three from the line, two for three uh, from the field as well. Um, I thought he was just good all round. Yeah. Ernie. Did he miss a free throw? Did he? Yeah, he was two oh, for three. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I'm super impressed with Ernie. I think he's and, and across both games. You know, he came in just doing his job. You know, hustles hard, loves a toe run up and down the court. Um, <laughs> but he, you know, going after rebounds, getting offensive boards, second possessions for the Giants, um, you know, and, the, and in the Rapid League. And that's, uh, that's really valuable for both groups at this time of the stage of the season. Uh, the West Coast Williams had five points as well. And Nick Davidson, a little bit quieter in the Rapid League, perhaps with Hayden coming down to Rapid League level and, and seeing more of the ball. That was part of it. I also think they were protecting Nick a bit because they knew they had to use him in the uh, NBL game, which, again, he was really impressive. So we'll talk about him when we get to the NBL part. So, um, But it was good fun. Like Again, we, we're we super positive about the Rapid League. The Giants are winning, and but the whole thing is really fun. Like I find myself tuning in to the other NBL games early because I want to see a bit of Rapid League as well. Yeah, you get some exposure to some young talent and seeing uh, maybe for us uh, the – the familiarity of knowing some of those under 17 guys yeah. and having seen them play so there's some interest from for us to watch them um and just seeing how they're developing throughout the league is quite cool uh one of the things i spoke to you know obviously hayden is my son and we talk a lot about the games and uh, i just sort of talked to him about the transition between the rapid league into the nbl game after it and he says it's tough. Yeah. Like you play, the Rapid League is fast, um, you know, high intensity. You're, you're playing a lot, you know, because there's only a minimal amount of subs on the bench. And then you've got to transition into that NBL game. And that becomes quite hard when you get chucked out there and you're being pressed full court by the other point guard. You're bringing the ball up. Mm -hmm. and, and if you play big minutes and if you get guys into foul trouble like we did with the Giants, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of the main guys, that falls back onto those next those next level guys and uh he said 
it was it was hard work. You know, hard yeah. work playing. He played reasonably big minutes in the first half of the of the NBL game, and uh, he said it was tough. The um, it's the strength and conditioning trainers earn their money as well, don't they? Because those guys play, and then the trick is not to cool down too much, and then have to because sometimes there's half an hour between the game. Yeah, right? it's a minimum of twenty five minutes. That's the NBL rules. So that game went a little bit long. So there's still twenty five minutes put on the clock. That's the rule um, before the NBL game. So tricky to maintain your readiness I guess it is yeah and you kind of you warm up and then you heat up you know you're physically you're sweating like crazy and then yeah. you have a break and you start to cool down and you know it's a it's a real balance um, and you talk about Nick Davison maybe not having as big an impact but it is also a balancing act for the coaches and making sure they manage those guys so are available for the next game shout out James Matthew played uh, every single second of the Rapid League game 16 minutes and 60 seconds. Yeah. 17 minutes. Well, he wouldn't have it any other way, James. <laughs> Four fouls. <laughs> yeah. Um, but played well. Again, um, is a really exciting future for, for that young man. To the Souths NBL game, an elephant in the room. The Giants are 0 3. Yeah, they are 0 3. Um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of positives to look at. And obviously, the, the other elephant in the room is we're missing a couple of key guys, mm-hmm. you know, an import. Three. Um, Three key guys. Yeah. Sammy D, yeah. expected back. This Friday. Yeah, okay. Assuming Which will be a real no boost. setbacks this week, hopefully, with his plantar fascia afoot. He's expected to play this Friday and play almost full role, I believe, yeah. um, which would be awesome. Uh, and we'll talk about imports because there's been a few comments from Giants fans uh, on social media as well. Uh, completely understandable. Where are the imports? Um, there is a big center coming. Six foot 11 American guy. We can't say his name just yet contractually, but he's playing in the playoffs in Finland however long they take. And when their season is done, he'll be on the first flight to, uh, to fuck a two. So, um, and then we'll have him in. So that'll be a lot of help for, especially for Dan Fotu. Yeah. Um, we won't have to guard a massive person. So that could be hopefully in time for the Jets, for hopefully from our point of view, probably not from his point of view because he wants to win a championship over there. Um, if not the game after. Um, and a guard, rumor has it, Phil, could have a guard in town this week. Okay. Yeah, well that, you know, that type of thing is obviously going to boost the team. But it's also there's also a bit of time uh, requirement to get those guys fitted into the yep. system and understand what's going on. And sometimes that can be really clunky, uh, especially for the first couple of weeks. But it also depends on how intelligent these guys are and mm-hmm. whether they've got a basketball brain because they could you know spend five minutes on the court and pick it up straight away. Hopefully that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but then again, if they're just ballers and they come out and they play, and we saw that against the Bulls where... Um, Luther Mohammed. Yeah, he came in and he'd only been in the country for, what, 16 hours yeah. or something. Turned up, dropped 34 points against the Giants. And that's a, a one-point loss, which, you know, if the, the Bulls don't have that that guy turn up and do that, then the Giants probably won reasonably comfortably. Mm-hmm. But... Um, you know, that's the nature of the beast. You just never know when you get these imports what they're going to bring to the team. And, uh, you know, it's nice having our complement of Kiwi guys that we have at the moment, plus Dan Greeter. You know, I thought I think he's improving with every game. And, uh, you know, Dan Fortu and, and uh, uh, Alex McNaught didn't have his best game, but, you know, hampered with foul trouble. But, um, you know, these guys are, are, haven't played a lot of basketball recently, so they're taking a couple of games to get into it. And I think we've got a lot more good stuff to come. Yeah, a few points there. It's exciting to see where those two Dans are going to be when they get a bit more help around them and a bit more, you know, space and time um, because they both ended up with 20 and 10 games at the weekend against the Saints. So, you know, they're going to be great, I think. Yeah. Great giants this year when, um, when they, once the Cavalry arrive. Um, and the other way of doing it, yep, we're, everyone at the Giants is as frustrated as the fans, I think, about not having them in time just yet. It's just been one of those off-seasons, whereas... The other way, didn't you get them super early, like the Sharks, for example, who had all three locked and loaded in January, or mm-hmm. well, ones where they've already sent one home. Yeah. And they're own three, you know? Yeah. So there's pros and cons, right? If you get them all early, sometimes you don't get the right guys. Sometimes you have to wait. The nature of when our league starts, the NBL starts, um, it clashed this year and, and last year with the end of G League, which is where a lot of good players come from, and some of the European leagues, like we're seeing in Finland right now, where a lot of the players come from. Um, so sometimes you have to wait. You yeah. just got to make the six. You got to make the yeah. six. That's the key, right? There's, it's not over yet. We're yeah. not out of it yet. That's right. No, like, by no means. There are, there, there's a number of teams throughout the league that still don't have their imports. Yeah. You know, so they're still fitting in pieces. You know, even this week, they've 
teams have got players arriving. Um, so it's not uncommon. And you pointed out that the timing of the league is there's always a crossover yeah. with um, either you know the Aussie NBL, uh, anything to do with European leagues, as we're seeing with Finland and the, the big guy that's coming. You know, and then at the end, the, the, the New Zealand NBL is condensed because you have the New Zealand window, the national team window. Yep. So you've got either uh, world championships or Olympic qualifier events. So it, it makes it really tough because you can't just go out there and pick any old random guy because what happens is they t- generally turn out to be a dud. Yeah. So you've got to do your homework. Either as a player or as a person or as both. Yeah. And they come and, yeah, yeah. we've seen it all. You've and, seen it all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you, the other thing is too is if you do get a good one, and Mike does such a great job with his guys and his teams, and they and they play well. It's really hard to get them back yep. because this is like a stepping stone for them to get another contract, which ends up being in Europe or. Well, look G at Jerry League. West. Yeah, he came from here. You know, almost won MVP. He was second in the MVP race to Xavier Cooks, who went to the NBA, um, and then got a massive deal in China and has gone on to big deals in Europe as well. So. You put a phone call in and say, yeah, I had a great time over there, Mike, but unfortunately these guys can pay me 10 times as much yeah. as they can in a short amount of time. So that's right. you know, it's a yeah. job for these guys. Yeah. So yeah, And that is something the league is getting better at. You know, the, 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 the wage salary is going up. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so there's more opportunity to pay guys more, which is really, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Well, the import's 100%. Yeah. yeah. If you've got enough money, you can get someone good. You know, um, you know, where previously, if you don't have a lot of money, it was like, well, let's take a stab in the dark out of someone out of college, first time pro, never played anywhere before, mm-hmm. and hopefully they're okay. Yeah. And then you win some, you lose some yeah. in that regard. Um, to the game. Uh, fast start, wasn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, we went in a little bit apprehensive, thinking, oh, geez, um, Saints are the Saints. Um, they just put beat the Tuatata by 30 um, the week before. Uh, all of a sudden, the Giants up seven nothing. Aston Inwood put into the starting lineup against his old team. Um, I thought he had a great game, Aston. You know, just sneaky. Did didn't his plus minus was great. He didn't do anything wrong, I don't think. And he's never going to be oh, on this team anyway, like a thirty points a game kind of guy. But I thought he's going to be one of those real Dylan Boucher esque glue guys. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. He's he's that type of guy, and he could really um, sort of make his put his stamp on an NBL singlet or a giant singlet moving forward, particularly with Sam, you know, sort of moving towards the sort of latter end of his mm. career. Uh, he would be a really good replacement for Sam in the future. You know, Sam's still got plenty to give to the Giants, don't get me wrong, but Aston is one of those guys that Sam could take under his wing and really sort of work with him mm-hmm. to teach him his tools of the trade and how he works and and Aston will you know benefit from that big time but I thought he was excellent against the Saints you know went out there he he was put on their best player Hiram Harris you know and did a pretty good job on him initially but Hiram's an excellent player you know he's going to get his points and he's going to do his stuff but I thought uh, Aston really made him work for it. The only slight problem I have with Aston Inwood is his judgment. You know, he's just turned me down with a, for a Wyoming Knight Riders contract, <laughs> yeah. which I was pretty upset about. Yeah, well, he's still young, you know. Give he's got time. a lot to learn. Uh, the trouble is with that connection with Sam that he's going to go play for the Stoke Bears, which sickening, but I get it. Yeah, but there's also shows you a level of loyalty there too. You know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Sam has, Sam and him are good, pretty good mates. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, it'll be unfortunate when the Knight Riders give him a, a thrashing in the, <laughs> the local... Uh, People like um, that foul trouble uh, came in early this week. Naughty uh, Alex McNaught got in some early tri- foul trouble. Uh, Nick Davidson, who came on to replace Alex McNaught, got into some early foul trouble. I actually thought Nick was again really impressive, um, and it was tough losing Alex McNaught in particular because Nick Davidson. We we've waxed lyrical, lyrical about him to start the season, and rightly so. And he's going to have an awesome career. But right now, it's tough for him and Hayden Jones off the bench to guard bona fide Australian NBL. Guards, which they had in Ben Eyre and Isaiah Liafa. Uh, Isaiah Liafa's a starting point guard. Well, if Shaley's around, I guess he's off the bench. But, you know, starting point guard for the Breakers. He's a tall black regular. He's a very, very good player. Um, yeah. And that's a tough assignment for those youngsters. Yeah, well, you just sort of saw in that last quarter, Liafa decided to just turn things up a little bit. First and, three quarters, and, he just yeah. thought, I'll just keep shooting until yeah. I feel good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then yeah, kind of took over in that last quarter and really 
um, helped the Saints develop a lead and just through his play and sharing the basketball and knocking a few shots down. So he's quality. Uh, but you're right, for Nick and Hayden Jones, like those guys, it's a real step up to come in and try and guard those guys. And just their, you know, the experience is not quite there yet, but the only way you get that is to play. Mm-hmm. You know, So it's a good opportunity for them. Uh, the foul trouble... You know, it, it was unfortunate, but it, it happens. You know, and I think we saw a little bit of that with Dan Foto in the, the game against the Bulls where he picked up three quick fouls. Mm. And that really was a problem for the Giants. And, and when we're shorthanded, those players, particularly our main guys, they've got to be smarter about how they utilize their fouls. And if if they give up a basket for, you know, just without reaching in or catching, you know, catching that third foul at the wrong time of the game, um, that's what they need to be thinking. You know, rather give up two points than you know pick up their third foul, and now we have them sitting on the bench for ten, the next ten minutes. Um, you know, and Alex picked up a probably one that he wishes he hadn't have done, where he was off the ball and he just bumped a cutter, and the referee saw it and they called a foul. Yeah. You know, like um, that's going to happen in yeah. the games. Um, one of the things that I've really noticed through playing in my career was um, the the teams that come out the most aggressive on the defensive end, generally they pick up initial fouls. It's risky though. It is risky, but if they're spreading the load, like if everyone's being aggressive, um, what happens is the referees will tend to go, you know, foul, 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 and then they're like, hmm, we're probably calling too many fouls. Yeah. Let's put the whistle away and it allows the team to stay aggressive on the defensive end and that's where most of the better defensive teams get away with that is because they are known to be aggressive on the defensive end Rams are similar you know they play a really aggressive style um, Saints play similar style so it kind of the referees adjust rather than the teams adjust uh, although we saw a lot of fouls particularly in that first half of the game there were a lot of wh- lot of whistle in that game um Mike Fitcher wasn't overly happy with it. Picked up a T. Uh, and who else picked up a technical? Ben Eyre picked up a technical A. Yeah, I, I think Zico Coronel was one of the most one of the most composed performances from Zico Coronel. And I'm not not coaching performance, but um, you know, with the referees, yeah, <laughs> there's plenty to get mad about from both sides. Um, and Zico kept his composure, which you don't often see um, from Zeke's, but um, that was interesting to see. But yeah, it was, there was some whistle. Yeah. Like I think with uh, the Saints, it was a weird game. It was a weird game. It was real clunky. There was yeah. a lot of a lot of mistakes, um, a lot of missed shots. You know, and I think for Zico and his team, you know, he probably felt comfortable. They were doing all the right things to get the right shots. They just weren't making them. Mm. So that you can't really get frustrated with that because they would they were getting the good they were getting good yeah. looks and they just weren't hitting. You know, if that was a different story then the game complexion would have been completely different. So you're saying that the 24 turnovers were leading to Mike Fitchett's mood on the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> well, that adds to the frustration, right? Because a yeah. lot of them were probably, there was, a, I'd say, a third of them, maybe 50% of them were really quite unforced turnovers. Mm. Just basic passes. A little bit, and also just like a little bit of sloppiness yeah. dribbling. You yeah. know, and just, uh, yeah, just... Almost, they just pick the pocket a few times, didn't yeah. they? As, or we get a rebound and they get poked away, mm-hmm. and those ones are, are, are real coach killers. Um, yeah, Nick Davidson came in and did admirably. Obviously, got in a bit of foul trouble, but he had six assists, led the league in assists, uh, led the league, led the team in assists that night with six, um, and was aggressive, trying to get to his shot uh, as well. Um, he's going to be, he's going to have a really interesting career. I'm excited to see. Like, he's an amateur player this year. We spoke about him before he went to America. Um, played a season, has come back trying to get an improved offer to a to a school over there. It keeps going the way he's going. There'll be plenty of schools wanting to take a wanting to take a punt on him. Yeah, you would think so. You know, he's really starting to uh, you know he's taking his opportunities and making his mark on the you know the Giants and really giving F- Coach Fitchett a good option for that next guard. Um, you know, particularly if one of their main guys gets into foul trouble, he he knows he, he's starting. Nick's becoming quite reliable. Mm. You know, he comes in, plays good defense. Uh, he's not too shy to look at his opportunities on offense. You know, so I think he's uh, really doing a good job of uh, lifting his stock. We talked about it, it being a strange game, and everything we've said sounds relatively negative so far around the Giants, but they stayed in it. You know, it was yeah. it was tied up after three quarters, and we've said from the start that 
I think from this group of giants, we're going to see that week in, week out. They're going to leave everything out there and fight to stay in it. Um, Greta was a massive part of that. Um, he was, you know, we talked about him needing a bit of help because he having to force a few things to try and, in, in, you know, insert his will on the game. But he did that, like 27 and 11 he finished with. Um, played well, a few turnovers in there. But like I said, he had the ball in the hand a lot more than he will. Yeah, you know when when the cavalry arrive, when some imports come, and Sam Dempster comes back as well. Uh, but it was Dan Fotu that really got the Giants back into the game in that third quarter, like four <coughs> for four from three in the third. Yeah, he was uh, a little bit quiet in the first half. Didn't you know? Didn't score a lot, but in the second half, he came out and he he hit a you know four three pointers in the uh, in the second half, which were pretty big three pointers, um, and and kept the Giants in it. I thought. You, you can never fault the effort of the Giants. I think mm. that is something that is, you know, kind of been ingrained in the Giants teams throughout the years. And, you know, Mike Fitchett is pushing that. They've got to play hard on the defensive end because talent-wise on the offensive end, they're not quite there yet. Um, add a few more pieces in, and then they become a, a much better machine in that side of things. But defensively, you can hang your hat on, on the Giants to play hard. And they've got to to stay in games. And I thought they did a good job of that. They were disruptive against the Saints. Managed to hang in there for three quarters. And um, unfortunately, you know, Saints, just their experience showed through in that last quarter. Isaiah Leafa was throwing some outrageous passes he in was. that last quarter. Right? <laughs> yeah. Holy, yeah. that was fun to watch. Um, so the Saints got the win, nine-point win. Um, they go to 2-0. and uh, We'll talk a little bit more about the ladder coming up shortly. Uh, off the court which is my favourite thing to talk about. Uh, atmosphere was great at the TC, yeah. another, another sellout, 20 straight. Um, my family were in the crowd, they said they had a great time. Here's some behind the scenes gossip. The GIN, listen to this. I love a mascot. So, GIN, the main GIN, you know, because without pulling the curtain back too much, it's not a real ant. The person inside the GIN, <laughs> unavailable on the day, right? To the backup ant, on debut. Last the Rapid League game. Can't handle it. Too stressful. <laughs> never heard, I've never heard anything like it. But literally said, I can't do it. Took the suit, suit off. He's like, I'm done. I'm out. And then, um, so quick phone call. Backup comes in and does the NBL game. Does a great job. The backup from the backup. The backup, backup for the backup. The third string ant. <laughs> right. Okay. Is now the second string ant. Yeah, tell you right. that. Okay. How can you not handle a, an ant? <clears throat> but um, yeah, anyway, just yeah, some just of the things we deal with on game day at the Giants. <laughs> yeah, well, it's same as playing, right? If you put your hand up, you do a good job. You just move up the ranks. Yeah, I've just never known that. But yeah. um, you know, the atmosphere was awesome. Um, it was really cool to see. So keep coming out, Giants fans. We're, it's such a great night out in town. And sometimes I wish, Phil, that we just didn't have. Sometimes I don't want to commentate <laughs> just because I want to look around. I see all the corporate tables having a great time. The boys from the West Coast basketball were up from Greymouth. Um, they had a good time as well. Shout out to those guys. Um, awesome for them to to book a trip and, and bring the the wives up and have a nice weekend in Nelson. Um, there's a couple of birthday parties out there. It was just like so much fun, and then we are working. Yeah. That's right. We, we can't are. complain. It's a pretty cool yeah. job, but still. Yeah. One sometimes. Of, I guess one of the things too with the. You know, having people coming up from the coast, you know, there's regularly people coming up from Reefton and mm. Westport. And, like, it just shows the reach yep. of the Giants. And, um, <clears throat> and talking to one of the, the coast boys, he said he's got a son that um, goes to one of the schools down there. And, you know, prior to the Westside Blitz happening, the school had no basketball teams. The first one that happened, all of a sudden they had two basketball teams. And yeah. this most recent one... They've now got four basketball teams. Awesome. So, so it shows you it works. Yeah, right? it's yeah. having a big. That sort of event is having a big impact on the wider region, and the growth of basketball and the sport. And uh, that's really cool to see. Right, let's have a look forward to we uh, shall we to Friday night, the Auckland Tuatara. It doesn't get any easier for this giant side, uh, and yet we might have a, another player in town by then, and, and hopefully Sam Dempster back as well, which I think will probably be the biggest addition this week will be having Sammy D back because he'll slot in and he's been training with him and knows everything, obviously. Uh, but this is an Auckland to a Tata side with some serious firepower. They're, you know, Corey Webster, Cam Glidden, Ruben Tarangi, Tom Vodanovic, Rob Lowe. That's their starting five. Yeah, it's a, essentially a national team starting five. That's a, five that's right a <laughs> That team who go to a World yeah. Cup could start at a World yeah. Cup, you know. Uh, they haven't got heaps of depth, 
You know, they've got former giant Josh Ledger off the bench who's getting better each year. He plays in the big body. Um, the likes of uh, that fella, Ruben Fitzgerald, out of yeah. Westlake Boys. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be tough, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And, um, you know, I think we saw a different team from them against the Saints where they just didn't fire. And, you know, a lot of those guys are in a similar situation to our boys that they haven't played a lot of basketball prior to playing that first hit out. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> you know, they, they sh that showed on the floor. The second game, though, they played – they were a lot tougher. Um, you know, they've uh, – Managed to find their stride a little bit. They they haven't had Vadanovic. Uh, he got married last yeah. couple of weekends ago. Yeah, and Robles so. just had a baby. So yeah, there's a bit going on. There is the a court. bit going on. Yeah, yeah. so Vadanovic, I assume, will be back for this next game. Which, uh, you know, he probably hasn't played a lot of basketball either um, in the the previous sort of six months as well. So he'll be having his sort of first hit out. Um, so a bit, bit of a test of the lungs for him. But they pose a big problem because they have Rob Lowe. Mm -hmm. You know, and Rob Lowe was an MVP candidate, you know, from the from the outset just because of the way he plays and the impact that he has on the court and uh, something that has really caused problems for the Giants in the previous games is, is the size of other teams and he poses that, that issue for us. He had 16 and 12 against the Fi. They, they also, the other big problem they have is just they've got some just stone cold buckets. You know, yeah. like if the offense breaks down, you can give the ball to Corey Webster and yeah. he'll find a good shot. You know, and he had 22 points. They, but they play a lot of minutes, you know. Uh, Tarangi, Lowe, uh, Webster, Glidden all played nearly 33, 4, 34 minutes in their last game. Yeah, and uh, they'll have to because the, the, the nature of the makeup of their team is that they're, yeah. they're, they're sort of five or six deep. So they're, they're reliant on those guys playing big minutes. So uh, The Wheel played 25. One of my favorite NBL <laughs> players outside the Giants, Nick Barrow. Yeah. The Wheel, I call him, because the Wheel Barrow is hilarious. I don't care if you don't find it funny. Mm. Um, he played 25 minutes. That's a lot of minutes for him. I know he's super fit, um, but that's a lot of minutes. Yeah, but I, I suppose the thing is, you know, if we if they have problems where they do get guys into foul trouble, then you know, Coach Aaron Young he has to go to his mm -hmm. bench and utilize those guys. And uh, you know, Nick is a very experienced player. He's been in the NBL for a long time, so he he. Yes, he's losing a little bit of size, but he's not losing any experience. So he'll just come in, he'll slot in, he'll do his thing. He's kind of a glue guy. He'll yeah. set good screens, he'll <clears> rebound, <throat> he'll play good defense. Um, he won't score a huge amount of points, but he's capable, but that's that's not his thing. Uh, he'll just keep the team ticking over. So, you know, it's a good team. Um, the depth may, may you could question the depth, but I think if you did that, then some of these other guys who are sitting on the bench would say, well, hey, stuff you guys. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, they've got some great youngsters. Um, that young fella, Reed. Yeah. Um, Jameer Reed. Jameer is yeah, one of the under 17 boys. Rep yeah. guys. So, not, yeah. you know, not in a similar situation yeah. to Hayden. Tukaha Cooper paid 26 minutes. Yeah, the Northlander. He's also good. Uh, Jackson Kiss is, a, is another kid yeah. who I think is possibly carrying an injury at the moment, but. This guy is a highlight reel waiting to oh, happen, yeah. you know, um, and he's in that under-17 age group as well. So, um, you know, at full strength, they're, they're a good squad. They're yeah. a good squad. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but it's going to be fun because they're also fun to watch if you're just a basketball fan too. Anytime you get to watch, you know, Corey Webster, Rob Lowe, those guys, Cam Glidden, it's, it's going to be, it's definitely worth coming to watch. And nearly sold out again. 21, looking likely, 21 straight sellouts. So make sure you get your tickets, giants.flickit.nz or just go to the Giants socials, you'll find it there. Um, definitely worth getting it. All right, here's a new little feature uh, that we're going to introduce each week, uh, which isn't new for us because we do it anyway. It's called Hugh and Phil's Over Under. <laughs> Great name. Uh, so what Phil and I do when we commentate each week is we sit there before the game, we go through rehearsal, we have to be there about an hour and a bit before the game anyway, and we always do a little Over Under between us. We're not allowed to wage on the NBL, you know, through uh, integrity rules. So we're not allowed to bet or anything like that. We don't do that. Just between us, we choose a market each. So I'll be like, um, Rob Lowe points. And then Phil has to tell me, he has to set a limit, 10 and a half, and I have to choose over or under. In that case, I would choose over because I assume Rob Lowe will score over 10 and a half points. So we do it ourselves anyway, Phil. So I thought let's do it on the podcast so we can lay out our thoughts to everyone listening. And then they can watch the game and see who's going to win the over-under. And normally we just go for a beer, don't we? Uh, usually. <laughs> you yeah. owe me two beers from, <laughs> from uh, the weekend's games. Um, so for the Tuatara game, I'll choose a 
Giants market and you choose the Tuatata market, okay? Okay. Well, I feel that's slightly unfair on me because I've got to then say if whether the, yeah, whether the Giants player is going to do something good no, or, no, no, or no, not. No, 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 because I'm going to choose. I'm doing this deliberately. Okay. I'll, so I'll say the market, then you give me the over-under, and then I'll say over-under on that player. Okay. So, for example, right. I'm going to say um, for this weekend, I'm going to say Dan Fotu rebounds. So you give me a limit. And I choose over under. Okay. I'll say uh, eight and a half. Over. I'm going over. He's going to get more than eight and a half rebounds. Yeah. That's, you give me, you just give me a beer. Pour it now. Yeah. All right. And then for Tua Tata, I'll go Corey Webster points. No, you got to choose it. You got to choose it. Sorry. Well, let's go Corey Webster points. Okay. Uh, 20 and a half. 20.5. Do you want to know I don't want to fire Corey up in case he listens to the podcast. He won't <laughs> listen to the podcast. What was it? What was the number again? Twenty point five. Ah, oh, I'm going to go over. Are you okay? Well, that's uh, that's on you, naughty. You got him. You got him, <laughs> naughty. Shut him down for me. Um, all right, Hugh and Phil's over under. I need a handy sting for that, but lovely stuff. Right, let's talk around, uh, around the league. And before we do that, this is brought to you by Sales, as is the NBL. Sales.co.nz, your online code this week for all GI Antics listeners is Giant Half, all one word, G-I-A-N-T-H-A-L-F, Giant Half. That gets you a buy one, get one free on any half pizza available until Wednesday the 17th of April. So the next time the podcast comes out, Sales Nelson or Richmond, online ordering only, not available with any other promo voucher special or half pizza special. Uh, and Sales at Coda NZ to, for that one. Thanks very much to our friends at Sales, um, giving you some awesome pizzas throughout the season. Let's have a look very quickly, Phil, because we're almost out of time around the NBL. I've still got shot clock to do, which is my favorite part. Um, who have you noticed around the NBL? So we'll look at the bottom of the ladder where the Giants currently sit, the Sharks. Yeah. Are they trash? <laughs> Is that, I mean, like, what's the go with the Sharks? We've seen they had their import, got rid of one. They lost the Hawks last night in the pre season previews that we had to do for Sky Sport. I picked the Hawks to come bottom um, just because they lost so much five pound. They're doing a little rebuild over there, right? Hawks got, are actually looking pretty good. The Hawks are looking pretty good. So <laughs> yeah. I look silly. I did say in my thing that I was happy to be proved wrong because I like Jerry Kenny, as we've already established on this episode. And I like the fact that he is refreshing the Hawks. You know, Raspatch and um, Rokar have gone elsewhere and, they kind of, and they've been there for so long. Mm. And so they're kind of refreshing the Hawks. Uh, and the Hawks are 1-1 one and one with a win over the Sharks, who are 0-3 at the bottom. What are you made of the Southland Sharks? Yeah, look, I think um, you know, potentially they're one of the teams that had almost a full complement of players going through the blitz. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might be still missing... Braden Inger? Braden Inger, well, he had yeah. quite a bad injury, so I don't know when we'll see him back. But right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously, one of the imports hasn't worked out, so they've, uh, you know, shipped that player off, so we'll have somebody new coming in. Uh, pretty new group. Uh, they've also had injuries, I think, to um, the the shooter. God. He's, Alonzo Burton. Alonzo Burton, yeah. Sorry, Alonzo. I should know, who, know your name. Um you know, so having drop dropping an experienced player like that doesn't help. Uh, so, like, I don't think they're trash. I just think that they've had potentially some personnel issues. They haven't had the full complement of players. Um, you know, they've played two out of the three games away. They've had, only had one home game mm-hmm. uh, against Manawatu, who Manawatu, uh, you know, Tyrell Harrison is a beast oh yeah you know, and he the posed, rest of the league might be happy to see him go yeah <laughs> he posed a big problem and really um caused problems for the south and sharks down there along with their imports that play well so you know um i think we'll see southland win some games but i i just don't know whether they depth wise they're as strong as some of the other teams around the league the franklin bulls are a really interesting prospect this year we saw them here, they won by one point over the Giants, but they were pretty undermanned when they came here. They didn't have, they had just had Luther Mohammed fresh off the plane. They've since added Darrell Brantley, brother of the one that played for the Breakers, yeah. but he's played for them before mm-hmm. as well. And um, they've obviously got Timmons. Isaac Davidson is back. They've got Russ Batch already. And Jordan Hunt is on their roster as well. Who's, yeah. He had a, even a pretty, pretty serious injury over in the UK. So I don't think he's expected back until mid-season um but they're they're they two a second and import turn up 
Yeah, Brentley um, uh, to, to Brentley, go with yeah. to, with Mohamed. So they've still got and they got Casey Nwapo, who, despite going yeah. to school here, is, is an import. Kelmopoto. And they've still got Dom Kelmopoto to come yeah. back. So Drew Leila Songiapi came off the bench for 15 minutes. Um, one of Rasbach Davidson might drop to the bench, maybe, or Dom might come off the bench. They're looking pretty good. Yeah. They lo- they, and they beat the Rams. They're only champs by 10 points in the last round. Yeah. They did beat, they beat the Rams. Rams are probably a little bit undermanned, having uh, you know, obviously Lockie Lockie Albrook, Albrook, yeah. um, uh, not there. So, little, so undersized against a pretty decent size. Yeah. Timmons Bulls is a large team, human. You know. um, obviously, having Mohammed there for another week allows him yeah, to 31. get. Yeah, 31. He's going to be tough, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's a very good player. So, um, they're a really good team. And I think they are going to be a team that we that everybody else is going to have to watch out for this season. They certainly are. Anything else you picked up around the league before we move on? Oh, look, I think probably a shout out to to Hawks and yep. um, Jared Kenny and what he's doing with the the group up there. I think uh, you know they they cleaned out shop <laughs> um, the, at the end of last season, and uh, you know it's nice having Natai back in the group, and and they they've got their imports now and. You know, they look like they're playing a really good style of basketball. Have a really good pickup in uh, Keanu um, Rasmussen, mm-hmm. uh, a, a wing, a guard for them. He seems to be playing some really good basketball. So I think they are going to surprise a few teams as well. Yeah, and they're, they're a likable team, the Hawks. Yeah, Keanu Rasmussen had 35 uh, on 63%. Um, and Josh Roberts as well, 19 points, 15 rebounds. You know, so this is there's hope. This is the kind of stuff the imports will bring you. So hopefully we'll see that in the coming weeks for the Giants. To the NBS Fucker Two Focus, where we um, concentrate on all things community basketball. So a couple of notices coming through from the NBA Nelson Basketball Association. They're looking for some coaches who are happy to give up a few hours a week over the winter to help out some of the school teams, the secondary school teams, looking for coaches for the junior girls, junior boys, and senior boys teams around Nelson. So if you are keen on wetting your coaching whistle. Um, junior girls and boys coaching is a great place to start um, also it's super rewarding and really good fun uh, get in touch with the NBA either through Facebook or go straight to Sam or Denise at the NBA uh, and put your hand up then, then we need coaches in Nelson uh, and it's a great way to start and be more involved in basketball um, community champions as well we need some community champions volunteers that attend competition nights oversee the courts manage the crowds that come and watch school basketball things like that so um so that means nelson basketball can concentrate on refereeing uh, and the coaching and the playing if you're keen to be involved you get some great get to see some great basketball we'll throw some giant tickets giants tickets in there as well where we can as well for people who do put their hand up to be community champions uh, again get hold of the nba um and potentially the most exciting thing happening in community basketball phil Club ball starts in a, just under a month. Yeah, I'm on a fitness. Uh, I'm getting. I'm, I'm, hitting, I'm hitting boot camp to get some yeah. to get some fitness. Um, so we're excited for the start of club ball. Uh, what we're going to do from a GI Antics point of view is do a club ball special. So the week before, so in about three weeks' time, the week the week before um, uh, club ball starts, we're going to do a club ball special. Now, if you're a listener who cares not for local Nelson basketball, that is completely understandable. We'll do it as a separate episode, all right? So there'll be a GI Antics episode that week that is about the Giants and how they're going in the NBL, and we'll do a special club ball one as well. So if you are going to play club ball, uh, make sure you have signed up, but I'm going to be coming out to all your teams and getting a little, just a little preview. I want a preview from every team around player to watch, um, you know, star in the making, you know, the upcoming play, all that kind of stuff. It's build the club ball banter. So when we get there, it's going to be, we can have a bit of fun and everyone knows a little bit more about each other, not just the, the men's prems, but the women's prems as well. Yeah, I think Scott Bradley is going to have his hands full with ABC and oh, the number yeah. of teams that they have running through their club. Um, Why Man Night Riders? Looking to uh, get back into that championship circle again this year, maybe? Yeah, look, if I'm honest, Phil, I actually don't see us many winning games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least you're honest. But we'll talk about that when we get to the club ball special. But that's all coming up. Uh, and thanks to our friends at MBS for um, looking after us in the Fucker 2 Focus. That's almost it from us at Giantix uh, for episode three. We finished, though, with Shot Clock. And Phil, we got no guests, so you're on the clock for Shot Clock, okay? I'm slightly nervous about this. You love a quiz. Okay. So 23, 24 seconds. I don't want to shortchange you. <laughs> 24 seconds to name. This is not an easy one, but I'm excited for oh, it. Oh, it's slightly unfair. To name tall blacks who have debuted oh. since 2020. 
Go. Uh, Hayden Jones. Uh, <laughs> since 2020. Yep. Oh, my God. Liapa? Keep, um, keep talking. Jeez. This is good audio. <laughs> it's, I'm completely lost. I'm lost. I'm lost. How many seconds left? Zero. Zero. <laughs> I got two. <laughs> well, actually, I need to check. Right. I was at Liafa. I think he debuted before 2020. Hayden Jones. Yeah. Correct. He debuted in 2024, as we uh, know. Uh, Flynn Cameron, Tobias Cameron. Oh, here he goes. Yeah. No, he's got them all, <laughs> hasn't he? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Taylor Britt. Really? He's played 25 times since 2020. Hiram uh, Harris, debuted in 2020. Um, you missed that that whole really strange game in Australia. Oh, phew. I wouldn't Tane even Kittison, tell you. Zane Meal, Warwick Meal. Half, half of the names on that one. Yeah, that was a strange game. Jonathan Jensen uh, was another one there. I d- do not give me the shot clock ever again. <laughs> uh, I refuse to be on the podcast if that happens. Some again. of the bigger names you missed were Flynn Cameron. Yeah. Um, Tobias. Tobias Cameron, Richie Roger, Walter Brown. Taro Harrison? No, he was long before. Dane Samuel, Isaac Davidson, Yanni Wetzel, Sam Wardenberg. Um, <clears throat> one name I don't think you'll live down Samuel Dempster Sam Dempster yeah. could so, have been pre-2020 no it was 2022 uh, it that's was, a real hard one uh, because uh, the the Tall Blacks I guess calendar has changed so much I'm trying to defend my um, <laughs> oh, no, happy to let you you know um, make as much rope for yourself as you one. want <laughs> the one that lives in our household um, I was really hoping you weren't you were going to panic and not get Hayden <laughs> that would have been the funniest thing I was panicking trust me and so oh, I could tell um all right well at least now we have a really good high bar for shot clock Mike Fitcher had 18 and now we've got a really good low bar with your two I'd love to know how many other people would have got high would have got more than single figures yeah yeah, yeah, I, I told you it was tough. <clears throat> and I enjoyed every second of it, all 24 of them. Uh, that's us for GIANTEX. Big week coming up. Tuatata at home at the Trafalgar Centre on Friday night. And then next Wednesday, one or two jets are in town, which we'll talk about next week. So the podcast will come out next week uh, on the same day we play the jets. So it's a big day. Big day in Nelson next Wednesday. Uh, thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe on the Giants YouTube channel as well. That's where you can see the video of this episode, and that's where you can see Phil full panic uh, during Shot Club. There you go, the Giants YouTube channel. That's, that's, that's real. It was real. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week on GI Interview.